seen throughout Australia on the National Nine Network and featuring Graham Lyle and his orchestra. And now, here's Don! <laughs> To a brand new world, the world outside your door. Just say hello to a singing bird like no bird you've heard before. It's all there. Go and grab your share. Hey, life is a great big show, so go and introduce yourself. Say hello, say hello, or say how they do to a brand new man who's just begun to live. Say howdy do to a brand new man with lots of love to give. Shake my hand, watch my chest expand. Hey, you, you want to see me go, so go and introduce yourself. Say hello, say hello. Hi, and welcome to the show. We've got some great guests for you tonight. Susan Sankster will be joining us. We're going to be crossing live to Canberra for the premiere of the new motion picture, We of the Never Never. It's a star-studded evening. Pete Smith is there for us. The wonderful, wonderful Kamal has a wonderful song. And our special guest, Debbie Reynolds, will be with us. And she's going to be singing, too. Yeah. Now let me repeat. Come up one row seat. Your eyes can see it all. Yes, I repeat. There's lots of pie to it, but a slice ain't very small. Life I mean can be peachy king. You, you are in charge, you know, so go and introduce yourself. Say hello, say hello. Let Lots of pie to eat and a slice very small. Life by me can be peachy keen. Hey, you, you are in charge, you know, so go and introduce yourself. Say hello. Thank you very, very much. Oh, thank you. That's all right. <laughs> Get a little, uh, that's, a, that's a Frank Sinatra number that actually was a Pan Am commercial that all of a sudden became a song. I don't know how it did that, but it did it. Uh, listen, a little later, as we told you before, we're going to cross live to Canberra where the premiere of the highly acclaimed Australian motion picture, We of the Never Never. And I got to tell you, it is a beauty. I'll tell you more about it later. Uh, they're having the premiere. It's taking place. They say it's a celebrity pack night. I don't know what's going on so far. Pete Smith is over there now. Say hi to Pete Smith. Well, yeah, he's over there. Yes. Hello, Pete. Good evening. Thank you very much. Well, Don, yes, it is uh, indeed a celebrity packed evening. Canberra has been invaded in the nicest possible way today since. Uh, Early this afternoon, identities from the entertainment industry, uh, politics and the press have all been jetting into the national capital. Uh, the movie got underway here at the cinema centre just a little over an hour ago. I was with, hoping uh, that, Peter, or you were very lonely. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all in there enjoying the film. People oh. like, uh, well, the stars of the show, Angela Punch McGregor. Uh, there's Greg Tepper, the producer of the movie, arriving. Arthur Dignam, Lewis Fitzgerald. Yes. The Prime Minister, Malcolm Fraser, Mrs. Fraser. It looks, it looks very exciting, Peter. Or nice lighting and everything. There's Mr. Kerry Packer from Adams Packer. Hi, boss! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
Philip Adams, the executive producer of the movie, arriving there. Hi, boss. It's uh, a case of getting the movies. <laughs> They're all over us. Hi, boss. There's Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Fraser. <Tracer. laughs> yes, indeed. And Angela Punch McGregor, Don. Who, who is, is the... magnificent in this picture, Pete. Certainly is. Oh, she's wonderful. Just wonderful. Well, of course, with so many high expectations for the film, Don, it'll be very interesting to talk to some of the people involved in the movie. And uh, we'll be back towards the end of the show to take you to the premiere party. And we'll also give you a sneak preview, too. I can't wait, Pete. It just sounds terrific. Okay. Honestly. Okay, Have a good thank show, Peter Don. Smith out there, will you? All thank right, you. lovely stuff. Yeah. We are... Thank you. We are going to go away and we're going to take a break. When we come back, Debbie Reynolds is going to be here. And a little bit later, she's going to sing for us, too. But you're going to meet the lady first, okay? We will be back. Don't you go away. we got plenty more shows. What be nice. It's always a delight, I gotta say that, and I really, I never meant it more, to welcome Debbie Reynolds back to Australia. Three years been too long. Uh, it's much too long a wait to see her dazzle him on stage and off. She is the most personable lady I've ever met. Would you welcome one of show business's most vibrant stars, Debbie Reynolds, uh, and nice person too. Debbie Reynolds, here you go. Stitches out of the thing, right? Nice. I, uh, I would really like to work out what this love affair is that you have with Australia. They go just crazy when you come here. Yeah, I just think they're wonderful people. Everybody here is wonderful. They have great warmth and friendship and the most Fabulous sense of humor. Everybody just has got a funny bone. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, That's but... what I like, is if you don't have a sense of humor, I just don't think you can really be happy in life or enjoy it mm. and share. Don't they just seem to accept me as a nut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, are you? Uh, uh -huh. yeah. Well, I was born April Fool's Day. Is that, so you're I... kidding. Is that right? Really? <laughs> That's the truth. That's so I really fantastic. think that has something to do with it. When, when, you're, when you're born on that day and everybody's always teasing you, you know, hey, hey look at a fool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those, those dumb jokes, you know, you hear all your life. Yeah. You just start doing it. You know, climbing flagpoles and all those basic nothings that you shouldn't do when you're young, you know, and you get... Mm -hmm. I was always in the principal's office every day because I would always... You too. Were you always there? I was there forever. And it was lucky because most times I wasn't even in school. Uh, you yes, want to get me... In, to get me into the principal's office was a big thing. My mother think. was at school every day because they'd say, come down, your daughter has done something else wrong. And I was always sitting in the corner and I don't know. The teachers just didn't understand me. <laughs> well, you went to school in Texas. Well, I went to school in Texas, but I was really raised in Burbank. Oh, right. You know, Definitely. since I was a kid, Daddy moved from Texas when I was seven. So, I mean, I really would say that I'm Californian now, you know? Listen, there's got to be a million people asking the question all the time. How do you look so good? I mean, are you into aerobics or all of that stuff, or do you work out or what? I do. I don't. Aerobics wear me out. And you breathe so heavy, you know? I don't like to work hard. Might help you for after hours. Uh... Well, uh, <laughs> I think all that jumping up and down is not really good for women because, you know, everything, uh, yeah. Some women don't have enough to go around. Uh, oh, no, well, really? Have you got that problem? Not really, no. When I, when I stop, there are parts still moving, but we won't even discuss that. That's no, I, I find that uh, most of the gals I know, really, that running is very hard on them, and I don't think yeah. it's very good for you. 
bosoms and all that. And after all, that's vive la différence between the men and the women. Why not try and keep them up? La <laughs> certainement. Yes. But uh, isn't, aren't all the Hollywood people into that? Isn't Jane Fonda and all those people into aerobic classes Jane and dancing? Jane Fonda's got legs nine feet long, and it's not hard for her. I'm five foot one and a half. What's hard is to keep the little roly people skinny. <laughs> <laughs> she kicks her you... leg, and it comes over my head. It's like you. Look at you. My low yeah. stand of my stars in heaven. Yeah. Six foot three. It's not hard for tall people. It's not as hard. Okay. It's harder for short people to stay really trim. But I do. I, uh, I hate calisthenics, but that's what I do. You know, exercise it just... But just for specific parts, you know, I don't want to waste my time working on my knees because they don't need any work. You know, the knees are skinny anyway. Mm. You have to work on your arms and your stomach. Women have to work on that stuff. Well, men yeah. could if they want to. They can come over any time. Work. <laughs> well, that's a nice invite, I think. That's lovely. <laughs> what about you? You were having trouble giving up smoking at one time. Have you given it up? No, I've tried and I've tried and I just do, haven't been Do people successful. give you advice on how to quit? Does everybody give you advice? Well, they just tell me that I'm going to die. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> well, if that isn't incentive enough, what is it? I know, isn't that terrible? I'm very strong at everything. and I find that, that, that uh, smoking is definitely a dr It's like a, a drug, I think, you know. I find oh, yeah, it very sure. hard to quit. And I haven't been able to do that. No, and I pray about it. I do all that. I went to Schick or Schlick or did all those centers. Is that where they, they shock you with things? Well, they shock you and you smoke. Smoke 8,000 cigarettes and you throw up. I mean, of course you don't smoke for a day. I mean, you threw up. <laughs> <laughs> How do they do it? Every time you take a puff, do well, they give they you a shock? Well, they make you smoke. And... Well, you just smoke forever. You just sit there and smoke and smoke and smoke. See, when I hugged you, I split my skirt. But it's all right. The legs are good, so it was Oh, okay. perfect. You've been doing it. See? The exercise has paid off for the legs. Huh? Well, the legs never went anywhere. They stayed. Yeah, yeah I don't have to... <laughs> 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 I don't know. I looked in the mirror one day and everything had moved someplace else. I've lost control. But that's why I do do calisthenics. Do you do workouts? Yeah, well, I, I play tennis three times a week, and then when I'm not oh, playing tennis, good. I have to run. But the, jogging is awful because I, you know, everybody talks about the benefits of jogging, but I find it's the most boring thing in the whole world. It's jogging. Nothing to look at except your feet. I don't you know. know. So. Yeah, I, I'm not for that. I prefer dancing. Well, in my, oh, that... in my show, I, I dance a lot, so I get a lot of exercise that way. Dancers yeah. always have really good streamlined bodies. Well, you keep, uh, you have a lot of muscle, you know, from dancing. Yeah. And, of course, I was studying to be a gym teacher when I was young. So I've kept my figure through the years by working out, in a way, through dance. Mm. You know, because that's fun. When you dance, you have the music going, time passes faster, and you hold yourself together that way. You, you know, one of the things that you're most famous for are your impressions. And we had a thing we were going to do, which got very confused because I thought it was you. You, you uh, have a new impression that you've added to your act, which is not really a person. That's right, darling, but I can do all kinds of people. Sure, yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> you can do uh, different voices, but this time I couldn't find a new star to do because all the, the, the ladies today are not that identifiable, other than Dolly Parton, who might do in the show. Oh, so you I do decided, Dolly Parton? Uh, I do Dolly Parton. Here I come again. <laughs> 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 she has bigger, uh, but I... Uh, notes, notes, notes. A big, a, a, yes, a yes. greater range. Yes. <laughs> I, just add, I just added a, a lot of stuff everywhere, you know, and uh, mm. Dolly, that works out because she's so funny. Anyway, she's really funny. I think she's a really interesting lady, so she's fun to do. But then I couldn't find anybody else new to add, so I decided on the most new glamorous lady, and that's Miss Piggy. So I'm going to do Miss Piggy. Do you do her in the show, yeah. Miss Piggy? Uh-huh. How does she, can you talk like her for a minute, or do you need this gear on? Well, well you have to put on all your hair and your yeah. ears. Yeah, yeah. I just don't feel comfortable without my ears, as Miss Piggy. It's, yeah. a whole co it's a whole face and the hair and the thing and the, all the padding and everything oh, I'd love like to see that. it. It'd be terrific. Well, come on. I'll give you a free ticket. You I don't need a free show. ticket. I'll come and pay the price to see You're you. It's come? wonderful. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. We're, we're going to be at the... Art Center, the new. Oh, theater. well, I got a whole list of places where you're going to be, and I'll tell anywhere. them all about it, you know? All right. be good. Well, I'm happy to come. We're going to do a number for you, too, tonight. Yes, you and your, and your four blokes I and all that. Four boys, yeah. We're going to do a Speaking four. Speaking of boys, you know, we always hear about Carrie, your daughter, because of the Star Wars thing. You know, Star Wars uh, um, is, uh, of course, probably one of the most talked about films yeah. around the world. Uh, <laughs> but what about you have a son, Todd? I have Todd. He's my son, Todd. And how old is he? What does he do? He's uh, studying now ministry. So I'll have an actress and I'll have a minister. So I can go to church and I can go to the theater and it's all free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. He's a terrific boy and he's just, uh, he's very interested in the, in the, the work in Christ's work. And so he, he's very into the church. And, and also he does uh, records. You know how he, he likes to 
as do sound, you know, produce records. Mm. But he's, he's doing that mostly now for the church, for religious programs and all that. He's very into that. So we'll see. We don't know what direction. He's only 24, and I don't think you're really quite settled in at that age. Although I was, I had two babies. I was settled in. I was sitting on eggs, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> this is, you're going to be doing a number after this break. Now, this is a song. This is a number with the four boys from your show, from your Vegas this show. This is from the show. It's a '40s. But I don't do it alone. I want you to meet my boys. Sure. Boys, come out here and meet Don, because they haven't said hello. Here's your four boys. Yeah. Hey. All right. Hey. 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 Oh, hold on, this, is, uh, this is Steve Lane. This is Steve Lane. He's Steve Lane. Don Lane. Lane. Nice to meet this you. This is Kirby Ward. He's a cute little thing. He's Hello, crazy. Kirby. He's Hello, crazy, Lane. crazy. This is Tom Anthony, my tall fellow. He's Hello, your size. Tom. This is Shelby Graham. The very Hello. nice to meet you. So we're going to go. You want to do the dance? We'll do yeah, the come dance. On, let's it's go. a 40s minute. It's about count basically. And then you'll do it for us? Yeah, and you'll do the whole number for us. Well, all right. Well, we really like this. We really like this. We're coming back. I mean, we will be back. We'll be back. I know that I saw her. Did you see her? I saw her. Uh, crazy about me. I love the way she talks about. I love the way she talks about everybody else having a great body and she doesn't have one. And yeah. look at the look at the way you and I should never mind. I this voice just said, Hi, darling. Did it? <laughs> yes. I looked around, it was Max the floor manager. Oh. <laughs> Don, yes. I would like to pretend yes. that I'm a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist, right? Psychiatrist, right? And I'd like you to tell me the first thing that comes into your mind when I say a few sentences. The very first thing that comes into your mind. Okay. Right, here we go. Shemp. No, 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 no. I... <laughs> <laughs> the idea is... Three stooges, Shemp? With the glasses that you... I suddenly realised, of course, with these on, I can't see this. That's right. Tilt them down. Okay, now, the idea is I give you a word and you give me. A word, okay? okay right. You yeah. sure? Right. right. Yes, right. Uh, resists chipping and cracking. Um, Arcapel. Right. Right. Uh, dishwasher safe. Arcapel. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Right. Uh, interesting microwave proof. Um, uh, your arca interesting microwave proof? Or yes. Very interesting. Very interesting, yes. <laughs> microwave proof. <laughs> microwave proof, right. You still look like a the, Japanese uh... <laughs> prisoner of war. Please, we have, we have a mob in the audience tonight. One of my special guests. Yes? Right. Translucent. Right. Uh, a translucent is the finest China, Acapel. That's what it's Ah, Acapel. yes, the best value right. uh, dinnerware in Australia. Acapel. Yes, in Australia. Yes, I can't see a thing. Yes. <laughs> 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 they are Australia's Wait number. Minute, I'll refocus. Is that you, Don? Mm. Let me feel. Is yes, that you, Don? Yes, That's yes, certainly me. not Debbie. Me. Me. I said, <laughs> Australia's number one selling dinnerware, Acapel. How many times do I have to say it? Acapel. 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 What's Acapel? What's Acapel? Well, you know, Bert, that's the, the versatile and practical I French dinnerware. I don't feel very well, no. <laughs> it has all the great features that you've just mentioned. I don't. Acapel, Acapel, right? I was only joking. I Wait, knew what, what you were talking about. Acapel dinnerware comes in a great range of designs, all attractively gift boxed. Yes, and, and don't, uh, don't, <laughs> whatever you do, no, not on the floor, please. Anything. I'm not doing it. I just want to show that they're chip resistant. They're lovely. Well, see, even yes. like, you can do it on the carpet. Look at that. See? That's right. Look, look, see? Isn't that wonderful? Look, look at that. Nothing, nothing has broken at all. Thank you, God. Yes. Archipel, <laughs> a great gift idea, available from good stores throughout Australia. Thank you, Bertram from face. It's all right. Archipel. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome back, sir. I think it was around uh, 1964, the first time that I ever got to see Debbie Reynolds live. It was at the Riviera Hotel in Vegas. And boy, what a show. I never saw anybody work like that. Uh, if you want to see Debbie Reynolds in concert, you're going to have great opportunities. She's at the Victorian Arts Center, uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, down here. And now there's another night, a cup, even, oh, a cup night, actually, November the 2nd. Uh, at the Adelaide Festival Theatre, November the 4th, November the 5th through 7th, up at Reesby Workers Club. Tweed Head shall be at Twin Towns up there, that great club up there in, uh, just on the border between the 9th and the 14th. Newcastle, Gosford, Perth on the 23rd of November. And in Sydney at the Eastern Suburbs Leagues Club, the 26th to the 28th. Plenty of opportunity for people around the country to get to see this great lady and her act. The four boys are out there. They're getting ready to go. This is a number from her show. Okay, how about a hand? Okay, here's Debbie Reynolds and her boys. We got it. Hey, let's go further back to a mellow time To that place in time when beautiful music was king And hand in hand with swing, 
Sinatra made history. The melodies were never a mystery. Folks were table hopping. Lovers dance. All the bands were popping. And even though we guys were only half pint size, we play our daddy's radio and fantasize that it was us up on that stand with Tommy Dorsey's band. Grab your coat, don't forget your hat, and leave your worries. Leave them on the doorstep, live sweet. Just erect your feet to the sunny, sunny side of the street. Zap, zap, a doodle, that pitter pat. You know that happy tune is my step, live song beat. If you dig that beat on the sunny, sunny side of the street, used to walk in the shade with my blues on parade. What a Stuck in the shade, get hip, don't be afraid. Move it on over, kill yourself in the clover. Only hip for a cent, who cares? Rich as Rockefeller, can't be beat. Gold dust around my feet on the sunny, sunny side of the street. Folks are Gina Bugging and the Herman Herman Jogging down the track of the club car was jumping. The Macy man was blowing in a brighter day, and all the kids were doing the shag. And I shot a fancy and Scrooby Harmony and Melody Group Bots are lumping. To Gallington and Daisy blew the blues away. Musicianship was really their bad. Music was art, and once it got started, imagination and taste led the way. Right from the heart, the music imparted a treasure chest we could open today. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. Pardon me, boy. That tell me to choo Yeah. Face kill for it too. I'm going to Michigan to meet this. 
as they used to play. For me to it might as well be spring. The Pied Pipers and Uh, I don't want to step on anything here. If they want to keep laughing, let it go. I knew that you worked hard, but you didn't tell me you killed these four young men as well. They got <laughs> well, trouble keeping young. up with you. You got somebody else over there. Who's the fellow with the um, the extra notes hanging over the front of his belt? Uh, well, now we have Victor Glazer's my conductor back there, and Hello. Allie Burke, my and drummer. And you had your own drummer. Is that your drummer there? Yeah. Yep. What happened to his ears? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, we brought our whole crew with us, you know, from the States for lights and sound, Lenny mm. and David Dansky and wardrobe and hair, and everybody's here. That's tremendous. And oh, I'll tell you what, I can't thank you enough for doing that, fellas. Oh, you, you really worked your brains loose, yeah, too. Good stuff. Gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Is this yeah. gorgeous? Yeah, he looks like a bottle of uh, ketchup, <laughs> which is a bad. <laughs> no, I think the outfits are lovely. They just look wonderful. Yes, I think, I think they, they look handsome. We had a great time being yeah. on your show. You're very thank special. Thank you. Can we go out on a time step, or are you going to play yeah. something different? Oh, Can we? Yeah. Play it around here. Somebody do something, and we'll yes, all do that. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, this seems to be the night for charming and attractive ladies. Uh, Susan Sankster is certainly no stranger to Australian audiences. Whenever she comes home, it's news. It's always uh, front page papers and everything else. She's in Melbourne for the spring racing carnival and to watch some of the Sankster horses do their stuff. <laughs> I hope on Cup Day they do. I got a couple of bucks I'm going to put on one of them. Ladies and gentlemen, Susan Sankster. Say hello. <laughs> Do you want to? 
Susan just said, how do I follow that act? And I said, well, you don't have to sing or dance. She said, why not? If you want to sing or dance, we'll do it. Do you know a song? We'll sing it to, to finish up the segment. Well, after the, we win the Melbourne Cup, I'll after sing more Matilda on oh, your show. Oh, all, all right. right. Susan, listen, I was uh, curious. One of my research girls called you and said, we were very worried about when we have to do promos for the show, when we have to do introductions and things, as to what to say about someone sometimes. You don't always know. Um, they called you to say, what should they say? And you said, tell them I'm a Melbourne girl who's now moved to Sydney. Well, yes. But don't you, I mean, that's a, an oversimplification, <laughs> don't you think? I mean, with the amount of traveling that you do and the amount of places you go. Huh? Well, we're very thrilled. We've bought a lovely house in Sydney. Yeah, so I hear. Well, it was a, somebody else's, uh, was named after somebody else, another family no, no, or something. No, no, it belonged to the Radford family. Radford family, yeah. And we've called it Trois en Dor, which was after the Golden Fleece that won the English Derby this year. Oh, I see. So was that French translation of uh, Golden Fleece? I'm well, not Golden very Fleece good went French bankrupt, I guess. Oh. <laughs> oh, did it? <laughs> you Sorry. know that petroleum company? Uh, yes. Well, it was taken over. Yes. So uh, we called it the French name. Right. Well, we had a very thrilling racing year this year in England. Let me ask you about just a, I, I want to move on to the racing because I want to talk about um, um, all the horses that you've got entered. But uh, with the houses, you've got, uh, there's a place in the Bahamas, am I right? Or is it the Caribbean? Now? No, Barbados. Barbados, right. Yes. And you've got the house in Sydney. And yes. you've got uh, the Isle of Man. An honorary. A nunnery. Absolutely. Oh, that's right. A converted nunnery it yeah. is. Yeah. How much time did you have to spend uh, fixing that place up? About seven years. Really? <laughs> Just yeah. finished, yes. And how big is it? I mean, can you tell us, like, how many rooms and things? Well, somebody asked me when we were out in Australia, um, how many squares have you got, Susie? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and right. I said I wouldn't have a clue. But it's, it's a lovely house. It's, it's got a very long passageway with two rooms off it either side. Wow. And it looks rather grim from the outside, but it, um, it's quite warm and friendly inside. And I understand you did, uh, were in charge of and uh, did all the decorating in here. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So where do you like staying the best? I mean, let's put Australia aside because you are Australian. But I mean, let's yes. say, where do you like the best outside of here? Uh, well, it has to be that place. This one. Yes. yes. There's old right. Ned Kelly there. <laughs> yes. And, and what about Barbados? Uh, no thrill being down there? Uh? Well, I much prefer, you see, we have... The flat, we follow the flat racing season, mm -hmm. and it's just finished in England now, and then we come out to Australia, and we like to winter somewhere where it's rather warm weather. And if it's not California where the horses are racing, or Miami, we've, that, that's why we've bought the house in Sydney, because of Robert's horse racing industries in, out here. Well, were you interested in horses, Susan, before um, you met Robert? Well, well Andrew, I mean, except to put Andrew and I had a wonderful filly called Leilani that ah. won the Horse of the Ooh, Year yes. award. Yes. yes. So I was interested in that way. Uh-huh. Um, but I think with Robert, we've developed this international breeding facility where he moves horses to all different countries and sends mares to stallions in every other country, and it's fascinating. How much do you have to say in that operation, I mean, about... Nothing. Nothing? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I lead the winners in if I'm lucky. <laughs> do you? Well, that's not, that's, that must be a thrill in itself. I mean, uh, you yes. know, walking down there with that, that horse in that circle, it'd be lovely. Absolutely. You know? yeah. The adrenaline really flows. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. They take the picture so quickly, too, don't they? Uh, nobody seems to wait uh, when they take the photographs. Yes, I they know, always want to know how I'm in the position to lead it in. I say, faith. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you've got a big belief in that it's going to get Absolutely. there, right? What about the spring racing carnival? Now, of course, the Melbourne Cup, uh, the biggest racing event uh, in this hemisphere, I suppose, but uh, how does it compare with the other ones around the world? Uh, I think the Melbourne Cup carnival is a sheer credit to the VRC. I think it's the best staged racing carnival in the world. Mm. Um, the horse racing, the fashions, the, the, the crowd participation, it's just the most fantastic atmosphere all around. Yeah. And it's to their credit. It's also a two-mile race, you know. I, it always shocks Americans when I tell them that they got a race here that goes two miles. They go, what? Nobody can believe I it. I know. Gonna, when I'm know. European oriented in racing yeah. and um, Triumphant March that won the Mooney Valley Cup last week is running in the Delgetti on Saturday and then she, yeah. he's running in the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Well, let's talk about Triumphal March. Triumphal March won a race. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Mooney Valley Stakes, didn't he? Was that Mooney, Mooney Valley, Valley Cup? Cup, Cup yes. Excuse me. And uh, and everybody was depressed after the race, or at least that's the way the newspaper reports went, saying that there was. I'm not de depressed. Well, okay, <laughs> but they said there was depression in the Sangster camp, but for some reason you felt that Triumphal March would not win the Melbourne Cup. Don't because you believe it? No. Okay, I'll take your word for it if you want me to. Be right with me. Uh, what about the, now? You got a Monday night. There's a concert or something Monday night. Is it, what is it's Task Force? I heard about that today. I don't know what it is. Is that a, a uh, some charity do or something? Yes. Monday night. Yeah. Yes, and I've been asked to join a panel apparently. Uh huh. And. Um, um, I gather Miss Debbie Reynolds is also performing there too. That's right. So yeah. we're all contributing, and right, uh, yeah. um, 
I have to do the fashions in the field. Uh, they've asked me for the first time ever in Australia would I come and judge the fashions in the field. So I'm, I'm going out there on Cup Day to do that. It's going to be a, a, a pretty exhilarating day for me. I know. Yes. 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 What's fashionable? Well, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just going to look and say I like that or I don't like that or something. You know. Minis or something. And then uh, is that what is that? Is this it? is that on the far right? Oh, let me see that. Oh, I love it. Don't let her see it. <laughs> yeah, you can you can look at this in the in the in the monitor and I get a good look. There she is, folks. Oh, this is the good old days in Channel Nine. That's right. Yeah. What was this a current affair? No man's land. No man's land. Yes. Oh, that's right. There's Mickey. Mickey to stew. Yes. yes. What position did Antonio, you hold on that person? Um, Bailey. Right. And okay. forgotten about the other two. <laughs> that's uh, that, we know who this is. That's Beads. Kay Borden. Kay Borden. Yes, who used to be Peter Feynman's secretary. Till she left and went to become Jimmy Kay's secretary, and then she left and became somebody else's secretary. No, she still is. She's up, she's up in Sydney. Nice looking group of ladies. Very independent la group of ladies, this. We were. I think we were the first sort of group of ladies that got together and did a current affairs program. And, and, and also said, we're not going to take any advice from men, we'll run it our way, I think. Well, I think Peter Feynman had a bit to do with it. Where is oh, he? Oh, did he? Yes. <laughs> He's up hiding in the booth, you know, and all of that. Is, um, Life must be very happy for you, but does the travelling ever get you down? It's an enormous amount of travelling. Do they give How you can I complain when Debbie's just flown in last oh. night and there she is performing fantastically? But that's one 22-hour trip. You take those trips all the time. What do they say? 160,000 kilometres a year you travel. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Qantas. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. does jet lag ever get to you or anything? Um, but round about the third day, but I'm mm. on the fifth day now, so I'm doing quite well. Okay, if you didn't pick Triumphal March... Tahir. Huh? Tahir. That's Tahir. the second leg. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Thanks for coming in. Susan, lovely to Colin see you. Colin Hazel, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> lovely to see you. Lovely to talk to you. Tell Robin I said hello. Okay, well, here's the side story, everybody. There's a lot more show. we got to go out and see the premiere of everything. We'll be all right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um... Barmix have a fruit and vegetable slicer, a dicer and shredder that makes electric machines and kitchen knives seem obsolete. Teresa's here. She's going to show you how you use this handy slicer called the V slicer. Isn't that right? That's right. That's it. Slicing onions is as fast as it's gone. Ooh, fantastic. And how's this uh, for coleslaw? Look at this. Shredding coleslaw, it's even oh. faster. Perfect, perfect. And when you're um, slicing tomatoes now, they don't squash. Ah. And celery can be sliced eight different ways. If well, you want it, there's a, a one, anyway. two, three, four, five at oh, least you there. you count them. Okay. <laughs> Potato <laughs> and, chips, uh, yeah. a precision cut. Okay, and show us how you dice onions. Dicing That's a good onions. Idea. Well, I'll tell you exactly. what, does it quick? Yeah. And you can do, get that through, your carrot straws in just a few seconds. You got this little holder too, protect your fingers. A lot of other That's things right. don't give you that. Very That's good. important. Washing the big V slicer takes seconds and it stores away in this new storage rack. That's that right. one right and there. And the hat just fits in there. And Barmix just released that storage rack today, by the way. The storage rack holds the holder or the slicer, the two slides, and the little hat. It goes just there. Okay, the slicer carton has recipes and instructions on it. And, and uh, your multi grater prepares all this sort of thing here, all the grated food. And the waffle cutter prepares your waffle cuts, noodle cuts, and crinkle cuts. That's pretty good stuff. Here's the, uh, the Bar Mix special salad presentation that you have right over there. Yeah. And uh, why don't you phone Bar Mix direct on these numbers? That's the only way you can order. And thank Teresa oh. very much for coming in. Okay, we'll be back. We got a lot more show. Thank you. Thank you very much. When it comes to selling records, few people can... <laughs> few people can outdo Kamal. Uh, he's here tonight to sing. I tell you what, the charisma that this guy has sometimes is absolutely astounding. Always On My Mind is the name of his new album. It's out next month. He's here tonight with a single from that album. So we're going to chat to him in just a second. Would we'll you say hello to Kamal with Ain't It Time You Try? the hardest thing to erase till something comes along to take its place ain't a time to try to love I know the feeling when you're feeling used tossed aside like worn out shoes playing games you were bound to lose ain't a time to try to love 
Anytime I try to breakfast in bed with someone who will love you instead of leaving you after it's all been said and done. I'm not perfect, I'm only a man, but I can love you if anyone can, and I'll be there after it's all been said. And there ain't a time to try to learn Take my hand and don't be afraid Together we can find a way We'd be fools to let it slip away It was sent from above Ain't a time to try to breakfast in bed with someone Instead of leaving you after it's all been said and done, I'm not perfect, I'm only a man, but I can love you if anyone can, and I'll be there after it's all been said and done. Ain't it time to try to love? to gather from the outfits that I've noticed you in lately that you are giving the caftans away, is it? Not really. I think to sing ain't a time in a caftan, it ain't time, is it? I mean... Well, it might not be the time, but yeah, you're certainly but, ready. Yeah, but uh, I, I just felt that uh, because the, the new album we're doing is sort of most, mostly contemporary songs, yeah. it does not go with a caftan, so to speak. You're say. always on my mind. Is that the, um, is that the song? That's yes. the title song That's for the That's the album. one you sang a couple of times. Well, we did it a couple of times, mm -hmm. but I just love it. It's yeah. a beautiful song. In I, fact, I haven't you know, heard your version yet, but no, I, no, I know I, it. I, the reason I did it was because when I was in America a few months ago, I saw Willie Nelson do that on the Johnny Carson show. And it was, I don't know whether, you know, you're a Willie Nelson fan. I've never been a great fan of Willie Nelson. But he did such a fantastic job of it. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of Willie Nelson and Willie Nelson's music. However, I went to yeah. see Willie Nelson in concert, uh -huh. and I must admit I was really bored. Uh, yeah. He never yeah. talks, and he just keeps singing yeah. one song after another. But yeah. in small doses, yeah. Willie Nelson music and his albums yeah. and stuff to listen to it, fantastic. It just really has the right touch. Let me ask you, you're going to work at the, um, the New Art Center? Yes, on the 15th of uh, next month, Yeah. two days after my birthday. Ah, do you want to tell me how old you're going to be, Kamal? You no. You don't? <laughs> you're not going to tell yours. I Can I get... You'll tell mine. No, 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 no. It's all right. I don't want to. You no. just don't want to yeah. know yours. No, exactly. Right. <laughs> but I didn't realize we had our birthday on the same day. Yes. 13th of... Oh. We're Thir Scorpius. Do you have one of those things? 13th of November. Yeah, I got, I got a, one of those things. Wait a minute. What do you got? If I can find it. <laughs> Hang on, I got a, wait a minute, I got a choice here of about 10. I don't know, whatever. I think yours is taller somehow. Well, let me see. What do you got? Oh, that's a beautiful, that's yeah. got diamonds and everything in you it. You want to swap or what? I'm not going to show mine. Uh, all right. <laughs> it says KK on there. The Captain What's your kid. name? Kamal, Kamal? No, the Captain Kid. Captain <laughs> Kid. Kid, yeah. There's things about you we never find <laughs> out. You're a very Secret <laughs> Service person. Why am I sitting here holding my medals? Wait a minute, I'll put this back here. And, and what's in there, the Australian Pops Orchestra at this thing? The Australian Pops Orchestra, apparently mm -hmm. it's uh, 60 or 70 piece strong. Yeah. And I've never had the pleasure of doing it with such a big orchestra. And the, the you know, it's the uh, Victorian Arts Centre, it's apparently, yeah. it's a magnificent venue. I've been meaning to see it in the last couple of days. I didn't get a chance, I'll see it tomorrow. Do the girls still swoon down in front? Do they still go, ah, oh, and do all of that? Then? I never noticed. I just concentrate on my singing. You're such a liar. <laughs> you are. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and yeah. what about Hawaii? This is a big thing for you. That is such a surprise because I never went after that contract. I'm going to be there. I'm coming over there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll be in Hawaii yeah, during the start, month of January. You know. We leave here with the family, with all of us. Yeah. My wife and both kids here watching. Hi. I haven't seen them for four days. And, uh, hi, kids. Hi. And uh, 
so we, yeah, yeah. We're living on Christmas Day. <laughs> we're going to have two two Christmas uh, dinners yeah. on Christmas Day because we're living on Christmas and we start the show there on the 28th of. Uh, you'll have three Christmas dinners. If you leave here on Christmas Day, you'll have one here. Then you'll have one on the, on plane, the plane. Then you'll and have one, one when you're, you get there. You're right, right. again. You're three right Christmas again. Three times, third time lucky. And uh, we'll eventually go to uh, Hawaii when we'll get there and yeah. do the show on the 28th of uh, December for at three consecutive months. At the Royal Hawaiian. At the Royal Hawaiian. So well, that's we're lovely. all invited. So. If you're going to go to Hawaii, there's a little touch of home for you. Sir. Good luck, kid. Thank I really you very mean. much. Okay, thanks Thank very you. much. With the album and with the engagement. Thank you. Okay. We got the wheel coming up. We still got to cross over to Canberra. We'll do that in a little while. We're going to have a lot of fun with the wheel, though. Hang in there. Thanks a lot. Hi everybody, Pete Smith still here in Canberra and awaiting the finish of the premiere of We of the Never Never. Very soon this area, this courtyard outside the theatre in the heart of Canberra will be filled with celebrities and we'll be back to capture some of the excitement very, very shortly. In the meantime, it's Don's Wheel! Welcome again to Don's Wheel featuring Newton's Nuts. And tonight, the major prize, one of three cars valued between $7,000 and $8,000. A Gemini, a Mazda, or a Sigma from Gary and Warren Smith, Oakley, Mulgrave, and Sunshine. Gary and Warren say, underpay. <laughs> and cruise Sigma's fabulous Pacific on board the magnificent Fairstar on a dream holiday that includes accommodation, international cuisine, and top class entertainment. All $1,500 worth of Red Book carpet available from local Carpet Core retail stores. And the new Faf Singtronic 1229 home sewing machine, plus the incredible Faf Rotary Ina. And you could win seven days of fun at Australia's first country club hotel casino, Long Preston Federal, flying first class with TAA. Yet another great prize on Dunn's Wheel. Oh, I'm in love. In love. In love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in love. The You're... skin, the eyes, the voice, the way the very voice speaks to me. Debbie oh. Reynolds. No, Kamal. Oh, stop. <laughs> I love him. I love him. There has been, there has been some... Did you hear the story that Kamal told against himself? Now, naturally, I wouldn't tell the story unless Kamal told me. Has this been cleared by Kamal? It has, because Kamal told the story. Oh. His little boy, whose name I forget now, Master Kamal, <laughs> came home from school and said, Dad, I've got a joke for you. And Kamal said, yes, what is it, my son? <laughs> he said, what do you call a Kamal in a Red Rolls Royce? Uh -oh. Really? Truly? Uh -oh. <laughs> Kamal just told me a word of honour. Yeah. He said, I don't know. What do you call a Kamal in a Red Rolls Royce? He said, a Jaffa. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> Kamal just told us my word of honour. My word of honour. Isn't that lovely? Yes. To be out. Just a minute, let me find out. Now, that's right. true. You, ask, you go and get Kamal and ask him, yeah. and he will tell you he told me that story. Maybe you can come out and tell us four or five others. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Save us some time. Would you like to meet our nut? Yes, I certainly would. Our yes. nut for this evening. That looks like it's going to be accepted. By the way, have you had a chance to look at that We of the Never Never? Have you seen the poster? I haven't seen it myself. Peter Smith has. Is Pete, by the way, still up there all yes. by himself? Yeah, there. Hello, Peter. Yeah, I'm oh, up here on my Peter. own. Peter, you shouldn't be there. There's something happening in the background. Yes, <laughs> yes there is, actually. You can see that Canberra is. This is R rated. Do you realize? Look what they're doing there, will you? You stand too close to that, Peter, and you'll be running to the loo all day. <laughs> Could you just get them to pan around? Because I actually... I see the front. I, mo I modelled for that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? That's right. Yeah. The base, the base. Isn't that terrific? Yeah. Yes. How They're much longer do you have to stall out there, Pete? <laughs> I, this is not a store. Look, you can't see that sort of thing on national television every night of the week. Why don't you step over there, close to the fountain? Why are you hiding back there? You well, we're walk... trying to fix the toilets. Uh, we'll be back very shortly. <laughs> hey, Peter, let me ask you something about yes. the crowd. Did the, was everyone in a good mood? How was the Prime Minister? He's had a pretty quiet week. Oh, he's... Well, he's had a... Well, uh, that's really understating it. Now, he is in a wonderful mood, and we're going to try and ask him what he thought of the picture a little later on. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk to him manually. I tell you the or best once way. A year. <laughs> the best way to get round him, by the way, if you really want to get an answer concerning the film, yes. don't just don't just come up straight up to him and say, you know, Mr. Fraser, enjoy, enjoy the film. Yeah. Right. Just go up to him, Pete, and say something like, uh, any chance of an election this year, Mr. Prime Minister? <laughs> you know, and sort of ingratiate yourself with him. <laughs> Look, I want to get back for new faces tomorrow night. Yeah, I look forward to it. Have we you got a special question you'd like me to ask the Prime Minister? Yes. Yes. 
What is it? That tat sticker he owes me. When am I going to get it? <laughs> now, just give him our very best and also everyone who's there. Who, any, who, any, who else is there? Well, uh, look, there are so many celebrities. I'm the only person I haven't heard of tonight up here. There are, <laughs> no, there, are, there are really a lot of very important people up here from the world of uh, films. Uh, Mr. Packer is here himself, Don. Mr. Who? Mr. Packer. Packer, Packer, yeah. Packer, Packer. Mr. Kerry Packer is here. Is he really? And my God voice breaks him. slightly <laughs> when I say that. <laughs> Is he... Can he hear what we're saying? Yes, he can. Would you like me to move out? Look, have a look over here. Oh, wait, wait, no, hold on, oh, no, no, Peter, wait, Peter. Oh, Peter. Don't, don't, don't move from We Are The Never Never. I want to take you over and show you the bar stewards. OK. You're going to show us the bar stewards? Oh, well, there are bar maids That's too. a funny statue. Wait a minute. Is the name of that statue the We, we, we Are The, the Never Never? never. <laughs> yes, that's what I mentioned before. Oh, that's what I thought. Well, the same reaction. Uh, There's an you audition you? going on, boys. There's an audition going on. How would you like this for new faces, Bert? Let's have a listen. Let's have a listen. This is the uh, poverty band. They can't spell poverty. <laughs> <laughs> let me have a let me have a listen, Pete. Now I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm so close. They better get used to it. <laughs> Look, there's a girl in there playing with them too. Oh, they, well. Are they a country band? <laughs> They're a country band, are they? Well, they uh, yes, they've got some stuff on their boots, so I guess they are from the country. <laughs> Well, right, Pete, listen, we'll, we'll cross back over, Pete, when you've got something interesting. Yeah, right? we'll, we'll <laughs> wait until about one o'clock in the morning, Pete. Yes, Can I have a look at Newton's nut? Yes, yes certainly. certainly. Would you like to meet him? He's yes, coming right out here. It's Pierre Shields of Rosemary Crescent in Frankston. Hello, Hello Pierre. Pierre. Good to see you. Come. Yeah, what is this? Ah, very nice. I got the front of my lot. I it's, don't know why that's isn't up there. that terrible? What is that? That's I think it's Debbie Reynolds' hand. <laughs> Where would that come from? <laughs> yes, oh, that really is terrible. <laughs> Lux milk? <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind the... Where'd that come from, boys? Max? Uh, we thought it suited the occasion. We found the back alley. Ah, good boy. Good. I didn't find the well, bottom of the it's, it's nice to know, Max, that you found something that you could put out here that didn't break. Thanks very much. Good. Okay. Pierre, I believe you want to say hello to some workmates or whatever? Yeah, I'd like to say hello to all the, my friend of Peyton Brake Replacement in his Bentley. What are they again? Peyton Brake Replacement. Oh, Peyton. Yeah, yeah. 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 Famous one. And mm -hmm. uh, I got uh, some gift for both of you. A yeah. gift? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take yes. a gift. Anytime I can get yeah, a gift, I'll take a gift. Oh, oh yeah. lovely. Thank hello. you. Oh, this is very nice. Oh, my pen. goodness. A pen and pencil yeah. set. I feel like a bar mitzvah. And, a, <laughs> and the key tag? Yes. You lost your key tag, unfortunately. Oh, well, you can have mine. I lost the key. You can have mine. I'll get another one. Oh, thanks. I'll man. get another one, Pierre, won't I? I'll get another one. <laughs> Pierre, I'll get another one. Yeah, a lovely... Oh, one. look at that. That's just what I've always wanted. What a pregnant coasters. No, no, pregnant? Not oh, elegant. Elegant. Oh, elegant. Sorry, elegant. elegant. <laughs> they, are, they are very nice. By the ego. Look at that. I feel like saddle this. Look, oh, aren't they lovely? Could you just hold those for a second, Pierre? Just hold that. Oh, sure. Isn't yeah, that? Look you. at that. There's the cooker. There's the cooker barra. <laughs> and there's the. Uh, what's that? Again? That's the. No, no that's, that's a, a, a raccoon. A, a ringtail possum. 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 Oh, they're lovely. Uh, is this yes. what you make at work? Uh, well, we do at work. We give it to. On the side. On the side. Because you look after brakes too, don't you? Uh, yeah. Thanks. Right. Well, that's, well, I do. Thank you. Brakes on the animals. Yeah, good on you. How do you they stop? And we are very appreciative. What's the address again? A uh, pattern break replacement is Bentley. Lovely. What are you going to do yeah, for Pierre is French. You haven't spoken to him. Je parle français, mais je ne parle pas très bien. Oh, oui, oui, oui. Je viens de vous sacrer les morceaux, là. La pierre. La pierre. Vous êtes comme la fine. Yeah. Oh, je ne pas comme ma cape, pas comme la pince ne plie. Et je ne pas comme le chaud. And non, le hair. Le hair. Non, le hair. Il est bon. Il est bon. Oui, oui. What are you going to do? Well, uh... I'm going to be a baby, you know, it's a story about a little child on a chicken. Yes. So uh, he's trying desperately to chicken to have an egg. Okay, this so is a chicken trying to have an egg. Yeah, so the child is going to cry, the chicken is trying, and unfortunately... The child is crying, the chicken is trying, and it's a sad story. I didn't know you could translate oh, French. Oh, yes. Like that. Je parle français, mais je ne parle Wonderful. Oui, oui. I should be back in about two minutes. Second door down the left. Child okay. crying, chicken trying. Yeah, child trying. <laughs> For you and 50 oh, for you. <laughs> Get on your feet. Like a spin of the wheel. Thank Which you. is pretty good because they're all 20s. How what you did that, I don't know. But... What number would you like? Uh, well, Pierre, just after you got off my foot, what number would you like, mate? 
Let's look at those look up here. Well, I got three kids. We start on three. Three. Okay. three kids on three. three. Un, deux, trois. Three. Three. Down that way three. and le push. And le push. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're very disappointed because we can't say 24 in French. How do you say 24 in French, Pierre? Vingt-quatre. Vingt-quatre. Uh, this is uh, vingt-quatre. Vingt a selection of uh, the Tebow power tools. Oh, you have these at work, wouldn't you, Matibo? Oh, yeah. Well, you've got some more now. <laughs> to the value of around $1,200, Matibo power tools from West Germany are the superpowers for handymen and tradesmen. From an orbital sander, you know that is, don't you? Yep. To an impact drill, the name to know is... What's an orbital sander? Orbital sander so is... So you start when you let it go, it no, no. Yeah, it goes, it goes yeah. around, you know, it's sort of used on French polishing and stuff like that. Oh, right, yes. Sure. And also, uh, lots and lots of good things from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matebo, thanks once again, God. He makes it up and that's it. Oh, you've got for yourself, you've got this beautiful sweater which says you were Le Newton Nut on Le Don Le Show. Okay? <laughs> and you've got your $100 and it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Thank you, you Pierre. Much, Lovely to meet Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think so. Soon. I think so. I don't know what we think. Oh, my God, I have Also on the wheel, this seven-day holiday for two in Madang, flying in, it is bird of paradise jet to the South Pacific the way it used to be. And this amazing three-piece lime suite in genuine leather from Saba Lounge Furniture Exhibition and Sales, Dandenong. And a superb collection of watches and clocks from Crowds, Australia's national jeweller. And finally, the TAA Great Keppel Island Holiday for Two, flying our TAA for a truly wonderful experience. I am sorry for the things that I said. Uh... Hey, I'm going to find an entry now for next Thursday evening. This is what? We've only got four shows to go after it. tonight. Hard, hard to believe the year's flown by. It's quick flown, flown by. It, it, I understood. Did it really it? has oh. blown flew, hasn't it? Flown blue? I've got uh, Lillian... Song flown blue? Ik, Ikkovic. Lillian Ikkovic. I think that's Ivkovic. Ikkovic. And... Uh, Ikkovic. I'll be your bud. And Lillian comes from Derby Drive in Epping. You and she'll be here next Thursday. Message? Uh, ready ready in, Canberra. in Canberra. That must oh. mean that Peter Smith is ready in Canberra. Hi, hi Peter. Oh, hi, hi Pete. Pete. What's happening? Who's there any... Oh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please, I get headaches very easily. Who said I was ready? Look, ladies and gentlemen, everybody is here now. The preview is finished, the premiere is over, and in just a moment we'll be talking to some of the VIPs, the people behind the scenes in production, the stars of the show, hopefully, and also perhaps to uh, Prime Minister Fraser and Mrs Fraser as well to see what they felt about the movie. It's a magnificent film. I had the pleasure of seeing it before tonight's premiere at a sneak preview. Not a bit like the preview I saw. A see, I go to a lot of films. You boys know that, don't you? I go to a lot of movies. Sure. I see a lot of sneak previews. Not like the one a couple of weeks ago. It was so bad the film, Don. Would you believe this? It was a sneak preview. Halfway through, the people sneaked out. <laughs> I'd believe that. I think so. Mm -hmm. Have you boys uh, chosen the contestant for next week? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, we have. We have. We've done everything yours, possible, mate. Pete. This is yeah, up to you, you now, mate. Right ahead, mate. <laughs> We're waiting for you to do something instead of wandering around trying to pretend well, there's something happening there. You know what I mean? Why don't you really come clean and tell us all, Pete, that you're really at Souls Brothers Circus just around the corner? <laughs> <laughs> First up, I'd like to introduce you to the executive producer of Mr. Uh, Adam. 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 Say hello, everybody. Tell Adam. Adam. among the Canberra undertaking firms. It suits me, doesn't it? It's certainly don't not the think? one you had on last night, it is it? It is, actually. You know, what happened to the skivvy? <laughs> oh, Don, don't be awful. Oh. Hey, listen, I have to congratulate you. I didn't get the opportunity to see the whole motion picture. I saw a, 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 an amazing amount of clips that they sent over. Angela Punch McGregor is so good in this motion She's picture. And the cinematography, of course, you won an award for that. Uh, last night. Yep. Uh, there's nothing but congratulations in order. I really mean it, Philip. It is absolutely splendid. I have never seen scenery like that, an outback Thank like that. You, it's Dom. wonderful. You're a darling. I'd like to ask you, Philip, why did you go so far away off the beaten track? I mean, you what, we you're what, you're We tried to film it in St Kilda, but the, the, <laughs> there are too many buildings around and, uh, and we needed the trees in the anthills. No, but seriously... We shot know. a lot of it in the Fitzroy Gardens, but uh, <laughs> it didn't work either, so we no, went No, you didn't do that. And we wanted to do it on the location where it all happened. At Elsie Station. At Elsie Station. What was the 
reaction like in there tonight, Philip? Oh, not a dry in the house. Uh, uh, Tammy was having a bit of a sob, I think, and I certainly was. Now, there's... I've uh, seen it 14 times, and I cry every time, Don. There's Lewis Fitzgerald. There's Arthur Diggum and uh, Angela Punch McGregor. He plays the husband. Yes. And a, and a very, very wonderful, sensitive role he plays, too. Uh, and he is gun. And I yes. think Arthur is the best corpse in cinema history. When Arthur dies, he dies. Oh, it's do you think you should have left that to That's it. a very sad bit of the oh, film. Oh, well, yes, but it has to be admitted. Now, look at this rain sequence. This is incredible when you consider it is not actually raining. Oh, well, it's gone now, but uh, they sprayed a lot of water in there, Yes, they, they did indeed. It was all Verve Clico champagne. It was a big budget film. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy's in the film, of course? Yes, Tommy's in it. Every, almost everyone you've ever seen is in it, really. Here's Angela crossing the river and getting very badly dunked. Now, how did they do all that swirling of the water? They had well, motorboats, we, we didn't had, they? We had about 100 motorboats just upstream creating the, the turbulence. The, the turbulence. That's yeah. terrific. Give away all the secrets. Let some uh, people see it in well, the Well, one of them was your motorboat, Don. You ought to know. All right. <laughs> and here is the star, Angela Punch McGregor. Come in, Angela, and say hello to us. Say hello oh, to say Don. Say hello there. to Angela Punch McGregor. Congratulations on a magnificent job. Thank you. you know, hardship seems to follow you around. We saw you in the island for Universal and you're dabbed with mud and you went through all that terrible, you know, business. Now we find you, you know, dealing with all the all the atrocities up north. How do you get on with that sort Suits of thing? Suits me, doesn't it? Yeah. I... No, I don't think it does. We see your pretty face for the first time, Angela. I'm a masochist. <laughs> Angela, How... when, this, uh, when this role first... Uh, were you, did you seek out this role or did they seek you out? Well, it was a little bit of both. Um, I saw it coming my way and I thought, I'm not going to let it go. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, you are some smart lady. That is a powerhouse role you play. Uh, they're going to know about you all around the world now, kid, I'm telling you. How long were you working on the film, Angela? We were up there for three months in all. Three months. And a lot of hardships, really. I mean, I've heard so many stories about insects and snakes and all that sort of thing. Is that just publicity? They're all there. Oh, and here's Mr. Gunn himself, Arthur Dignam. Yes, Come hello, hello, Arthur Dignam. Play the host. Thank you. Thank you. Did you enjoy? Really wonderful. It certainly did. Yes, and I'm sure that the people in the viewing audience on the Don Lane Show will have an opportunity to uh, also enjoy the film when it opens, I believe, next Thursday. Yes, I think it is. Yeah. Around the country. Yeah. Yeah. Arthur, have you ever have you ever spent any time in the outback before? No. Well, it must have been a heck of an experience for you. I'll tell you because it's a very demanding role where you were doing all that. Thing. Yes, I'm glad I had something to, uh, to think about while I was there because it's a pretty extraordinary place. Yeah. Well, you've obviously been on a horse before, anyway. <laughs> no, I haven't. No? <laughs> Did you have a stunt double? <laughs> oh, I can't answer those questions in public. And this is wonderful. All of these people, all these actors are being discovered on horseback. Tom Burleson never rode a horse in his life. He is now Arthur Dignam, That's too. That's the right? tricks of the trade, eh? Yes, and here's right. Tommy, uh, Don. Sorry, we lost you there for a sec. Here's Tommy. Say hello to Tom. Hello, Tom. How are you? <laughs> Must be pretty exciting for you, Tom. Well, second premiere night since after Blacksmith, it's very exciting. You haven't yes. seen it before, have you? No, I haven't. Tommy, do you find that the chant of Jimmy Blacksmith follows you around, the reputation you earned on that film? Everywhere I walk, mate. They, instead of calling me Tommy, the people tend to call me Jimmy instead. Well, still, that's notoriety for you, isn't it? Or do they run away? That's what's important. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, did I hear Arthur say that was the first time he'd seen the film? Yes. Uh, yeah. Tonight. Yes, tonight was the first night that I've ever seen it. That must have been quite an experience. Well, it is. Actually, um, I've enjoyed it thoroughly, and um, I'm get pleased to break behind him. Will you get him out of the get way? Get out of the way. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Fraser, now, thank you very much. <laughs> Angela, Mr. and Mrs. Fraser. How do you do? Peter Smith, and there's your friend Don Lane there. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please greet uh, Malcolm, uh, Prime Minister Fraser and Mrs. Fraser. Yeah, tell me something. Did you enjoy the film? And here's Sabina Willie, who plays Bet Bet in the film, Don. Hello, darling, how are you? Good. That's good. Did you enjoy looking at the film on the screen? Yes. Did you enjoy it, Mrs. Fraser? Enormously. They tell me it's uh, really a lady's picture, something that women can relate to. No, certainly not. I think men need a great lesson to learn from it. <laughs> uh, All right. And that's that, Austra that Australian women are so strong and ha have made this country and I, I think she's a great example to us all. And the spirit of her is right throughout Australia. Yes, I, Fraser, I agree with you. Mr. Fraser, did it remind you of Noreen in the early days? <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. I thought it was a great film and I enjoyed every minute of it. What Tammy says is quite right. She's just saying that, you know, women really run the country. Some women try and hide it, but 
you know, this film makes it very plain. How long so, do you think it'll be before we have a, a female Prime Minister? Oh. oh, not too long at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping the seat warm for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we'll uh, let our distinguished guests enjoy the, uh, the preview party. And, Thank you uh, for taking the time to join us, uh, uh, Mr. Prime Minister and uh, Mrs. Fraser. Thank you very much. It was a great film. It was really well. <laughs> It is a terrific film, Don, and uh, it really captures the spirit of Australia, as you've uh, you've heard testimony to. And uh, most why of the is, why is everyone standing around there staring at you? Do you realise there's a hundred people there looking at you? Yes, but I am a star now, Don. You oh, see, right. I've made the big, I've made the big time. We've got to go, Don. We've got to let you go. You've got some more entertainment there. Thanks for uh, joining us up here. We hope you've been able to. Uh, we've been able to bring you a little bit of the atmosphere here. People are going to enjoy themselves now. Whatever you do, make sure you see We Are the Never Never. It's a beautiful film. Thank Pete Smith very much. Yeah. He did a few jobs out there. Really lovely. Thank you, Peter. It sounds like a, a great film, no, but what a... You will be... I know, you, I know you and I know some of your tastes, and I'm telling what about, you... What about the cast? Angela Punch McGregor, Arthur Dignan, and Malcolm Fraser. I mean, that yeah. really is Malcolm quite a good... Fraser, Malcolm Fraser. Why was he there, then? Well, he's just... Oh, I want the night off. I didn't realize yeah, right. that. I'm it, with yes. you now. But he's, he's going to have to lead exciting, in, in the sequel. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sounds a great gonna... movie. Yeah, uh, Tommy Tico, an old friend of yours, yep. an old friend of mine too. Very well. He's here tonight with his daughter, Vicky. Watch very carefully, by the way. His goatee is not right in the center. And it's a very interesting thing to look at, Tommy Tico. It's just slightly to the right. You watch carefully. <laughs> Honestly. What I, what I wanted to say was, a lot of people may not realize that Tommy was in charge of all of that music for the Commonwealth Games, those ceremonies. And if anyone ever took the time to work it out, you watch the opening and the closing ceremony, if you think about how much work and how much effort had to go in putting all of that music mm. together for mm. that show, and I mean, I think everybody in Australia would have watched Incredible. it. This is the guy that did it. And in fact, there's a, a, an album out now, Commonwealth Games album, and you'll be able to, uh, to, to get it soon, okay? Anyway, Maestro Tommy Tico is here. He's playing the theme from Lawrence of Arabia, and he's here with his daughter, Vicky. And watch for the goatee. It's up right in the center, I promise you. It's great. <laughs> Tommy Tico and his daughter, Vicky, here. <laughs> Chico. <laughs> and I'm Chico Chan. <laughs>
I, uh, I really have to say something. You know, uh, how long have I known you now? I've known you since you're about that tall. Mm -hmm. I think I met very tiny lady yeah. when I first It was amazing to see it all happen. Tell me. And I know you was almost as long as I've been in Australia. Mm -hmm. You got to be proud of all of this. Yes, I really want to show people. This is the album I was telling you about, which is the Commonwealth Games album. And uh, it's superb. It's uh, another great job from Tommy. Tommy, you, you must have spent uh, at least, what, six months, I suppose, or a year? A working, year. A year. One year. Working on the music and all yes. of that. Yes. A heck of a lot. The most amazing, I'm sorry, Vic, I'm not ignoring you. The most amazing part about it was the coordination, putting everything together, and no hitches. Everything went great. It was just Thank God it did. OK. Thank you very much for playing tonight. My pleasure. It's lovely to see you, all grown up and talented and playing piano. Thank you. And just for people that would like to know, this is the medal that they gave to Tommy Tico. You can read what it says on here. See, it's Commonwealth Games. You got a gold at the Commonwealth yes. Games. Yes. You want to tell everybody that? <laughs> yes. Okay. You'll be back to see us, I hope, early next year I or something, will, will you? I will. Uh, Thanks, Tommy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. We shall return to say goodnight, okay? Don't you go away. Might have a couple of laughs. Good night, good night, good night. That's your point. It's it's time to say good night, good night. <laughs> he can speak. <laughs> you never told me that. How do I know that? You can speak. <laughs> he says to me, sure. Up until now, everything's been okay. You know. <laughs> hey. We want to tell you about our next show. I tell you, it's going to be a good one. We're going out in style. We got four shows left for the year, and we really got exciting lineups for you. Just for example, next show, uh, one of Australia's uh, most famous sports heroes will be with us, Raylene Boyle, uh, from overseas, from England, a very, very popular entertainer and great singer. Scylla Black will be here. Marcia Hines will be here with her new special. Uh, and Pete Smith, let me tell you this, Pete Smith has got a whole of some film which shows uh, some goofs by Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton when they were filming The Biggest Little Whorehouse in Texas. And we're going to show them to you exclusively. And we've got a psychic panel that Kevin Arnett's put together. Um, a whole bunch of people. There's uh, clairvoyants and mind readers, and, and we've got a computer. We are going to attempt to pick the winner of the Melbourne Cup, all right? <laughs> we'll do the best we can. Hope you join us. There's a lot of fun in store. On behalf of Butsy, I told you it's exciting, didn't I? On behalf of Butsy, Bert, everybody in the show, thank you for joining us. Good night. I love your faces and yours too. Just a special word of warning to members of the studio audience. Be careful as you're driving out tonight. We don't want anyone bumping into Kamal's elephant. <laughs>